Our first uh, speaker is Kellyanne Foster, who's an associate professor of landscape architecture at Penn State University and author of a popular book called Becoming a Landscape Architect. And her talk is entitled, Is It Design? How Geodesign Compares with Other Design Theories. And I think you should be on if, we, if they switch it upstairs. Good. <clears throat> okay. All right. Good afternoon. The, the deadly right after lunch <laughs> spot here. So how many of you have a design background, show of hands? Okay, oh, quite a few. Well, think back to the first time you had that thrill of making an impact on a place. And good design does that. There's an energy and sheer exhilaration for both the designer and those you're designing for. And I want to focus on this. Oops, I forgot to, I've, I've got to do the advancing here. Um, I want to focus on this because the term geodesign is still relatively new. And so what makes geodesign different from GIS? The GIS community has been using layers for decision support for, um, for quite a while to great effect. And some people tend to think that that is geodesign, but it's really not. For example, weighted overlays really only tell you where something may or may not work. So geodesign is a different take on decision making. It adds the uniqueness and complexity of design to GIS, which results in a range of choices and involves community values. And Bill Miller, uh, who's trained as a uh, designer, he's an uh, architect by training, he states that geodesign is actually the third stage in the evolution of geographic information systems. Let me read a quote of his. There are three major segments of GIS evolution and technologies. The first is data, with the maps that bind, secure, and use data. Uh, Esri started out developing ge geodatabases, and the big question was, where's the data? As that mission was fulfilled, it migrated to the second segment, which is analysis and feature processing. You analyze geography for various purposes and reasons. The third segment is design, and that's the most recent. Once you have data, you analyze it for a purpose, then you do creative work with that analysis, end quote. And I would add, and I, I hope Bill would agree, that geodesign then engages GIS to better evaluate and understand the potential consequences of those creative ideas. So geodesign is evolving fast enough that it calls into question which approaches should actually merit using the term geodesign. So today I'm going to argue that the second part of that term, namely design, must be present in the process uh, for it to be truly representative of geodesign. So I'm defining, um, here's how I'm defining design for this presentation. Of course, the word uh, design is both a verb, a process, and a noun, the resulting outcome of a process. So what I'm going to focus on today is the verb definition of process, which is uh, powerful, excuse me, purposeful process to solve a problem involving creativity and skill. Uh, designs a process that changes need and purpose into a solution. Geodesign simply extends that concept into the geographic landscape. And so design thinking is always linked to an improved future. So it's important to uh, point out that design thinking is, is different from critical thinking, which is the process of analysis associated with the breaking down of ideas. Whereas design thinking is just the opposite. It's a creative process focused on building up of ideas. Now here are several popul popular definitions of geodesign. I've added some emphasis there. Um, but they make it clear that geodesign should not, in fact, cannot exist without the inclusion of design thinking. Now, there are, of course, many design theories. Um, but I thought it would be valuable to compare a couple of those to discover commonalities which can then be matched to the widely recognized geodesign process, um, Dr. Steins' framework for geodesign. Now, of course, uh, in a lightning talk, I don't have time to explain this framework. I trust many of you are familiar with it. Uh, rather, my aim is to understand the essential aspects of other theories and compare those to Dr. Steinus's approach. And when those theories align with his approach, you'll see a little check mark. So today, I'm going to briefly review three design theories. Herbert Simon's Seven Stages of Design Thinking, Morris Asimov's Horizontal Structure of Design, and Vijay Kumar's Seven Modes of the Design Innovation Process. <clears throat> so Simon outlined the design thinking process through the seven stages. I'll just highlight a few points here. Um, under define is first stage, uh, the first bullet point says decide what issue you're trying to resolve. And then the fourth bullet point says determine what will make the project successful. Under research, the last bullet point says take into account thought leaders' opinions. Under the ideation phase, uh, the first bullet point says identify the needs and motivations of your end users. Under prototype, Third bullet point says, seek feedback from a diverse group of people, including end users. Uh, second bullet point under choose is set aside emotion and ownership of ideas. 
And under learn, the second bullet point is determine if the solution met its goals. So let me highlight just a couple of points here. Um, and you can see it does, in fact, meet Dr. Sinitz's, um, or does align with his framework. Um, Simon feels that the very first steps in the process are um, the least understood, but the most valuable. And he believes it's essential to truly understand your challenge at hand. And that is central to Dr. Sinitz's framework. Simon also feels the way in which the problems are represented has a strong bearing on the quality of the solutions. The task of designing the solutions takes on an entirely different approach if human responses to a changed environment are taken into account. And this is also a core part of Dr. Steinitz's approach. Asimov's horizontal structure design begins with analysis through synthesis and then evaluation and concludes with communication. It also includes decision-making cycles as you move from abstract to concrete vertically. Asimov um, viewed this approach as iterative both within and between the various phases of activity. And Asimov's structure is roughly congruent with uh, operations research model, which has distinct phases of activity, um, but also has feedba feedback loops built into the process. And operations research requires you to have objective performance criteria that will then fundamentally guide your approach. And here again, there's a close alignment with Dr. Steinus's framework. Lastly, and briefly, we'll look at Vijay Kumar's seven modes of design innovation process. This is a process driven by experience, systems, culture, and behaviors. He discusses his modes in relation to sensing, knowing, or coming to know, framing, exploring, and realizing. Kumar then goes further and places these seven modes um, into a framework of four quadrants, research, analysis, synthesis, and realization. And this includes a horizontal axis that goes from understanding to making, and a, ab um, a vertical axis going from abstract to real. And Kumar's design of innovation process does provide a rough outline of the major components of the geodesign framework. Uh, design, um, including geodesign, is often nonlinear and responsive to feedback from stakeholders and the geodesign team. Both innovative design, as outlined by Kumar, and geodesign require a structured framework that enables this iteration and fluidity, but without sacrificing organization. Now, of course, Dr. Steinus has been honing his uh, design, uh, geodesign framework for decades, uh, so perhaps it's not a surprise that it has uh, such strong agreement with these theories. But what I hope is evident here is that geodesign is complex. It's far greater than even the most innovative GIS analysis. For projects to be labeled geodesign, they must include a majority of the components of these design theories or the design innovation processes. I hope I've helped to provide a greater understanding about the geodesign process, in particular, how to advance understanding about the design component of the process. And at Penn State, landscape architecture and geography have joined forces to offer online graduate programs in geodesign, and as you might guess, design thinking is well integrated with our programs. Thank you. <laughs>